Hi everyone, it's Rob Cosman from SellingFromTheBeach.com and this video, I'm going to walk you through an easy way to book your Shopify fees and sales taxes in QuickBooks. Before I get started, please subscribe, like, join our newsletter, there's a link below. We send out every two weeks loads of good information, quick value add, actionable items. Check it out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, but hopefully this will help. So what exactly is the problem? A lot of times that when you get a payment from Shopify, and I see this a lot of times with our Amazon clients, you know, that have a Shopify site on the side or people that just run a Shopify site, you basically get just the deposit, right? So you're only getting the net amount that Shopify passes on to you, which is not correct. You're not getting the sales amount, um, the gross sales amount, because Shopify withholds fees and also in the money that they give you is the sales tax collected. So we wanna make sure that we're breaking out the amount that you actually sold, the amount of fees you paid Shopify, and then the amount of sales taxes that you owe to the government. Now, what I'm gonna walk through is what I call a simple solution. There's more complex automated solutions. There's some services, I'll put some links below um, that will actually connect your Shopify and pull you know, pull the data in and automatically book it. But for a lot of people that you know don't wanna pay for another monthly service, maybe they only have some small transactions going through, this, this should suffice, okay? So the example I'm gonna go through here is a Canadian, um, depends this doesn't matter really if you're in the US or you know elsewhere wherever you have those sales tax liabilities we can just use the different sales tax liability that you have instead of what I'm going to show you which is GST and HST okay so this is an example and this is a screenshot that this is what you might see if you're using QuickBooks online a lot of our clients use that I use it it just works really well okay so Here's a payment that came in from Shopify. We see all that here. We have a rule created to go to website sales. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put zero rated on it, okay? And for this one, it's 235.91. I'm gonna walk you through the math on what the right amount of sales is and what the right amount of fees are, okay? So there's actually a few parts in this transaction. Now this is just one transaction I'm gonna walk through. The sales on this, we're going to say, was $207.96. This was charged at HST, a harmonized sales tax rate of 15%, so in the Maritimes. Peace goes. $31.19 for a total of two thirty nine fifteen. So that's what the customer paid to you, like through your website on this transaction, was $239.15. Now what happened was Shopify says, okay, we want a fee and they charge $3.24 on this transaction, and the net was a $235.91 that came into your account, okay? Now, remember, sales taxes, like in, in this case, sales taxes in Canada, it's charged based on the ship to location. So if you only ever sold in one province, then you know you can always assume the 15%, but in this case, you know, if you're selling all across the country, you've got 5%, 13%, 15%, a lot of different variables, right? So, but this example I'm going to walk through is a 15% one. So this is, don't get overwhelmed. I'm going to show you the debits and credits first, but then I'm going to show you how to actually do it. The debit and credit, like in accounting, you always, everything has to balance. That's the, the, that's the way accounting kind of works and bookkeeping also has to work. So I'm going to walk through exactly what the transaction is and what we need to achieve. So you're going to get, when you first get it, when you put that deposit in, we're going to say there's no sales tax on that. So basically the 235.91 is going to your sales. Okay, you're booking that as the sales. We also then basically need a journal entry. So you go to QuickBooks, you go to the add new plus, and then there's a journal entry, and you would make this journal entry. And what this does is it recognizes the 3119 of GST, HST that is payable now to the government. It also recognizes the $3.24 that you paid to, um, to Shopify. And then the balance to make this debit and credit balance out is $27.95, right? $31.19 minus $3.24, $27.95. So to show your math, because I never used to do this in school, Shopify sale that we first recorded in QuickBooks was $235.91, which we know is not the true sales figure. That's after all this. Then we subtracted the 2795 in that journal entry here. 
got us to the final sales that is showing now in QuickBooks, which would be the 20796, which as you see back on the top, 20796. So now after you first add that deposit, make this journal entry, what's reflected correctly in QuickBooks will be the 20796 sales, the 3119, 3119 that is the HST payable, and also the 324 Shopify expense. Now it'll be correct. So how do you actually do this and how would I suggest doing it? Because as you get a bunch of transactions, you don't want to do this every single time. I'd probably just do this once a month, once a quarter, once a year, uh, probably whenever you file Q, uh, GST, HST, you know, ideally you should be doing this monthly. You should be doing your bookkeeping monthly, but realistically, I know a lot of people don't do it. So I would probably go through and say, okay, if I'm going to do it, if I file my GST every quarter, I would do this quarterly and I would go through and I would pull the reports to get all the Shopify fees and to get all the GST. And I would just do it from that date range and I would make one journal entry for each quarter or for each month. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is, so as you go through and you get all these daily deposits coming in from Shopify, cause you're blowing it up and you're crushing it, just record them zero rated, no tax. Boom. That's the first step. Then when you decide you want to do this, if it's every quarter or month, go to the Shopify in your Shopify backend, you can go to the settings, payments, view payments. So you see this, you'll see this over on the uh, left-hand side, click on the payments and you go in there and you can request um, the payment range and download that. You can export it. So once you export that, you'll get all the Shopify fees in one of the columns. And the other thing is you go down to the taxes, you can click in there and you can download your tax report. And then you'll see all the different taxes that you've charged. So if you're only shipping to one province, it should be one. But if you're shipping multiples, it'll break it down as you know 5%, 13%, or 15%, depending on where you ship it. Okay. So you're going to go through, download all those, go back to QuickBooks. Back in QuickBooks, this is a journal entry. So I would make this journal entry for that whole quarter, let's say. Um, and I would put in you know some descriptions like this. You can put all the same or whatever you want, but this is just an example of what I would do. Go create a new journal entry. You record the GST HST payable. You can rewind this video and go back and check my math and see how it lines up and it better. Pretty sure I didn't make a mistake. Then you're recording your GST HST, you're recording your Shopify fees, and then you're correctly adjusting the website sales. Because remember, when you first book it, you're putting no GST, no HST on it. You're just putting the, the gross amount in, and then this will adjust it. So now that should get you to the correct sales, fees, and GST HST. So if you were in the US, for instance, or some other place um, where you have like maybe a PST as well, say you're in Quebec and you're doing GST, but you're also doing uh, provincial sales tax for Quebec, then you would make a journal entry to account for each of those separately. So you would pull out your tax reports and you would just have another line instead of GST, you'd also have one for the, say the QST, okay? Same thing if you're in Manitoba or you do others. So use this kind of as a guide. Um, hopefully that helps, remember, Subscribe to the newsletter, click below, smash the like button, get any questions, leave them below. Talk soon.